Hey, this is Justin from the Murray State University Recording Studio, and we're talking about mixing tips for vocals. I haven't quite decided to let Wayne Harper go just yet. We're going to take another look at one of his tunes. I really like this one. This is called Plowboy Blues. And I want to tell you just a little bit about what we did uh, during the tracking session. I had a video about the general approaches last time. Uh, as far as the mic and the room. But in addition to the mic and the room, I want to talk about the mic preamp. I had a Focusrite ISA430, which is a very nice channel strip, two rack space channel strip from Focusrite that includes not just a mic preamp, but also a compressor and an equalizer section so that you can do some things on the way in. And I also ran it through what uh, I have another mic pre called the Millennia HV3D. Now, the Millennia is also a very, very good, high-quality mic preamp, but it's known for being very clean. Whereas the Focusrite has character, the Millennia is very clean and sounds clean as a whistle, doesn't really give any coloration or very little. And it turned out that the mic that I wanted to use for Wayne actually ended up sounding too bass-heavy through the Focusrite. So we ended up using the Millennia instead. And that was really important because you really don't want to have to fight with a problem uh, that you introduce by your choice of, of a signal path. You want to choose a signal path that gets you closest to the end goal. So here, uh, channel one is Wayne's vocal. And I'm only going to talk about a couple of things. I'm not going to talk about every single thing, but I want to mention a few key things. First is the compressor. And this is just a stock Logic Pro X compressor. Um, that anybody that has Logic will have this compressor. I'm going to play a little bit and you can see how it's kicking in. Well, these pants are too short, holes in both shoes. Sometimes inclined to get these plowboy blues. Plowboy. Good with a horse sort of music. So you see that when he gets loud, we're taking a few dB off the peaks of uh, the loudest parts. And when he gets softer and he's singing more quietly, the compressor is not really engaging at all. The needle's not even moving. So that's reducing the dynamic range of his vocal, and that lets us keep the vocal overall louder. The other thing that I'd like to look at is EQ. And... You'll notice that down here at the low end at 70 hertz, which is right around here, I have 2 dB taken out at a very wide curve. And that is to, again, help control the low end. Now, one other thing that's interesting, I have at 1500 hertz, which is right here, I turn that on and off, but earbuds tend to put a peak right around 1500. And if you aren't careful, a mix will sound fine over most of your speakers, and it'll sound fine on your laptop speaker or on a home bookshelf system. But you listen to it with earbuds, and it will be piercingly painful, uh, even though it sounded fine everywhere else. So let's give a listen again to this and, and see uh, what you can if you can hear some of the things as I turn them on and turn them off. I'll go ahead and drop out the compressor, the EQ here, and the EQ on the master bus. And we'll add them back in as we go. Well, these pants are too short, holes in both shoes. Sometimes inclined to get these plowboy blues. He's a plowboy. Good with a horse sort of mute. Got acres to turn before the day is through. Well, he plow your tobacco, he plow out your corn, plow through your brambles till his bridges are torn. He's a plow boy, good with an Avery or a Moline. Minneapolis, it is. Done turned over more acres. Most folks even see. So that's where I'm at with this. I think that it sounds pretty good. And I think it stacks up nicely to other artists in the genre. Um, I'm thinking of people like Tim O'Brien and his album Chameleon, which is a, a stripped down just voice and guitar album. 
And when I listen to those two, I, I, I think that we're in the ballpark of that pretty, pretty closely. So there you go. That's a couple of ideas to play with as you're looking at mixing vocals. Make sure that you listen to what other people are doing, uh, not to copy them, but so that you realize what may or may not actually be a big mistake. There's a reason other mixers are doing some of these things uh, so that they don't have problems with different playback systems. So thanks a lot for listening. I hope this was uh, enjoyable for you. And make sure that you check out Recording Techniques, MUS 337 at Murray State University. We'd love for you to come be a part of that and listen with us.